on Marvel University, we're taking a look at nanotechnology. But what does nanotech even mean? We are here to find out what are the real life nanotech principles powering Ant-Man and the Wasp. Welcome to the California Nanosystems Institute at UCLA. I'm here with the Associate Director of CNSI, Adam Stieg. So to put it simply, nanotechnology is the science of small. Yeah, simply and literally. The word nano means small, mm -hmm. and we are making materials, devices, and understanding the world at that smallest of scales. Mm -hmm. And where we're gonna enter right now is our clean room facility. So I hear you have an experiment for us today to help explain some of the science behind the stinger that the wasps from the comic book uses. So when you think about what that stinger's doing, shooting out an electrical pulse, and the experiment we're gonna to do today is creating what's known as a supercapacitor that takes advantage of the properties of nanomaterials, right? Their high surface area and their very small size. And we're gonna create a very simple version of that and see if we can light up a light bulb today as an example or an analogy to the stinger from the wasp. All right, let's do it. What we basically have now is very highly porous carbon. What we need to do now is we need to add in citric acid, which serves as what is called our electrolyte. Unlike a battery, there's actually not a chemical reaction happening. It's just the motion of ions that's moving, which is why it can happen very fast. Yeah. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna charge the supercapacitor. Right? Okay. What we have here is basically a simple charger. And when we're ready to discharge, right, all we're gonna need to do is we're gonna try to hit this little button here twice. This LED is gonna flash. In the context of our analogy here, that would be like the sting. electrical sting. So let's try it two clicks. There we it go. Lit up. Okay. <laughs> Science fiction is a fantastic inspiration to the stuff that tends to come down the road. Next, I'm headed to meet Dr. Rita Blake to learn some of the science behind the suit of the wasp. One of the concepts that we like to utilize in uh, nanoscience is something called biomimicry. What we'd like to do is look at the way that things function in nature, see the cool things that already exist in the world, and then try to replicate them. One of the things that we're going to be doing today mm -hmm. is we're going to be looking at a concept called super hydrophobicity. Really does not like water. Exactly. So if we put some water on this, mm -hmm. you're telling me it's just going to fall right off. It's going to bounce right off even. Okay. So Let's see. <laughs> see that? I was not I was not expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just plants that exhibit this property, but actually a lot of insects do as well. If Ant-Man or the wasp had yes. a suit where they potentially had wings and they wanted to fly, yes. it would not be good if they were in the rain and all of a sudden they can't fly anymore. <laughs> Otherwise, it's raining, she's chasing a bad guy, it's not happening. It's a no-fly zone at that yeah. point. So we're gonna make a surface that really loves water and a surface that really hates water okay. to show the difference. All you right. ready? Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right, awesome. I've got some copper here. First, we're gonna make it micro rough by okay. sanding it and then we're gonna grow some silver on this surface and make it nano rough. And you're gonna dry it out. And the other three, we're gonna dip them into this chemical here, which okay. is uh, silver nitrate. In this case, just the nano roughness alone mm -hmm. is not enough. We have these other two that are just as rough as this one and yes. just as nano rough, but now they've got the chemical treatment on it. So now let's see what happens with those. This is extremely hydrophilic. Yeah, so that water is just spreading completely all flat. over that surface. And now if you try it on that one. It's so hydrophobic. It doesn't even want to stay. Yeah. So let me. <laughs> you can keep trying. I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> so it's not that far of a leap to say that the wasp suit from the comics may very well have been hydrophobic. No, not at all. Uh, scientists and engineers have already been able to make suits that give swimmers a very shark-like ability mm -hmm. by utilizing that idea of a directional hydrophobicity. So if we can do it for a swimmer, I'm sure we could do it for the wasp too. Finally, I'm visiting with Dr. Laurent Bentalila, the director of Advanced Light Microscopy. Here in the lab, we've got actually a collection of microscopes that will be very useful to actually look at Ant-Man at different scales. As soon as the pin particles shrink Ant-Man, it makes it like a man size, then that microscope will be just the right tool. So this light is going through this tube all the way into this machine. That's right. So all the lasers are feeding through that fiber, which is then fed to the microscope through that little port. So the light goes in into the microscope and it goes through an objective lens, which is a part that actually focuses the light onto the sample and magnify the image 
back to the detector. Gotcha. Can we see an example of this? Absolutely. So here we are looking inside small zebrafish, which is essentially the same size as Ant-Man. So this is a fish heart in action, pumping blood. And what scale is this? So we are in the micrometer mm -hmm. scale, which is 100 times smaller than the ant. If we were to go even smaller, yes. and that will become a problem mm -hmm. as soon as Ant-Man goes into the microverse, we will need to switch to a different technique. And what technique would we have? That will be to? the electron microscope. We will be able to see it at the atomic level. Laurent, thank you for having me in your lab. It was a pleasure to learn about microscopes and how we can see Ant-Man at different scales. Pleasure having you. Thank you. Nanotechnology doesn't just power Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's changing our most basic understanding of the building blocks of life, from the universe down to the nanoverse. Until next time, this is Marvel University.